Hi, I'm Rashonda. I'm the creator of ArtByRow.com, where you can find over 200 art and drawing tutorials. My goal is to inspire as many artists as possible to learn how to love their art and just enjoy the process and get the fun out of it. So I hope you'll join me today for this video, which is from a drawing prompt that we did in our Facebook group. The word is peace, and it was a lot of fun to do. So let's head on over to the studio and look at the drawing. Welcome to the studio. Today we're going to be drawing a doodle type work of art, probably. I'm not sure 100% what direction this is going to head in, which is part of why I want to make this video and share it with you. One of the biggest things that I hear people say they struggle with when it comes to their artwork is not knowing what to draw. And I don't believe that that's 100% true because it's very easy to come up with something to draw. Coming up with something to draw isn't difficult. Coming up with an idea isn't difficult, I don't think. I think what they're saying more is that they don't feel inspired. They can't think of something that feels inspiring to them to draw or to create a work of art or whatever it is you do. It, it doesn't, the medium doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're using clay, paint. Um, I use a lot of markers. I do a lot of drawings. It doesn't matter what you're doing. But I think most people feel like they're not inspired. But the thing about inspiration is that it's a lot like riding a bike. The hardest part is from the point of standing still and taking that first few efforts towards movement. So like when you're riding a bike, the first couple of revolutions with your pedals, those are the hardest. Once you get going, it's easy to keep going. And inspiration and creativity are much the same. The hardest part is to take those first steps. So I think that the best thing you can do if you're not feeling motivated, you don't know what to draw, pick something, it doesn't matter what it is, use some sort of system if you need to to help you. So one of the things that I do in the Facebook group is on Fridays we do a fun Friday and there's a drawing prompt. And the most recent one is the word peace. So my idea for these is that you see the word peace and you do whatever it is you want to do. It doesn't matter. Anything's fair game. Whatever that brings up for you is fair game. I love doing lettering. I love combining images with words. I like doing graffiti art. I love how the lettering and the backgrounds interact with each other. So I have some word prompts and you can do the words, you cannot do the word, it doesn't matter. But I do think that starting with a word is a really good way to get that momentum going and to take those first steps. So the most recent one is peace. And the first thing you need to know is what kind of paper are you gonna use? Is it going to be a smaller, larger? I decided to go with a full sheet. I'm doing it a, a loose sheet. You could also do it in a sketchbook. You could do a half page. I want to do this one a full page. And I'm just going to start by writing the word peace. I think I'll do it on an angle. And I chose a lettering style that I wanted to do. And it's just a, a fun kind of lettering style. I'm not going to stress out about it too much. I'm using a pencil to draw everything out ahead of time. You don't have to do it that way. You could just use a marker or a pen or whatever it is you want to do. But this is a really easy way to just get started. Get something put on paper. Don't stress out about it too much. Just go ahead and get started. Get some marks down. Don't stress out about it. Don't overthink it. I, I believe that a lot of what holds people back from taking the first steps is that they're overthinking things and 
trying to solve every problem before you even get started. And for one thing, that's really not very effective, but it's also very stressful. So I think if you can just go ahead and get started and not stress out about everything, you're going to be a lot happier. You're going to accomplish a lot more. So I'm doing the lettering first. And as I'm doing it, I'm seeing what comes up for the next step. Because right now, I don't know what my next step's going to be. I don't know what I want to include in this drawing. The only thing I know at this moment is that I'm going to have the word peace. And again, this was a drawing prop in the Facebook group for um, Fun Friday. And I'm just going to do the lettering. I'm going to use a pencil, make corrections as I go. The reason I'm using a pencil is because that's what's comfortable for me. It's what I enjoy. I have done some things where I just do drawings with pens. It's a good exercise to do to not use a pencil, but mostly I do my drawings as a way to relax. So I find it more relaxing to do my drawings with a pencil first. It takes a little bit longer because you have to do everything twice, but you have to do your drawing and then you got to go and finish it up with your outlines and colors and whatever else. It takes a little bit longer, but it's what's enjoyable for me. So that's how I like to work and I find it relaxing and a little bit therapeutic. So it is what it is. So as I said, I don't know how I'm going to finish this. I haven't worked through all the details yet. And I'm not going to before I get started because it's going to be much easier to figure these things out as I'm going than it is to try to figure everything out ahead of time. So I got my word piece. That's the lettering style I decided to go with. You can use any lettering style, it doesn't matter. And then the next thing is, for me, and something this is something I do a lot in my graffiti art, is I want to put the sort of halo drawing around my letters. I don't know what it's technically called. I, I always call it a halo because I'm just going around the outsides of the letters and keeping the shape, the overall shape of the letters. And this is nothing super like consistent or um, accurate, I guess I should say. Consistent, yes, accurate, no. But as you can see over here, I'm indenting a little bit to represent the pieces of the letter E. And it doesn't really matter. The only reason I'm doing that is just to make the shape a little bit more interesting, which you don't have to do it that way. You can do it however you want. I think it looks better if you make these indents and change it up a little bit. It gives it a nice shape. So I know when I do my colors, most likely what I'll end up doing is going over the main lines with black and then maybe doing a color inside. Um, I might do some lines like this. I think that might look nice. And again, I haven't really thought these things through yet. I'm just taking it one step at a time, one decision at a time. And creating your drawings and your artwork, it's really just a series of decisions. And there's nothing that's right or wrong. It's just a personal preference, what you're feeling at the time. So 
don't get too worried about it. Just keep working, make some decisions. So I now I have my starting point for my drawing, and then the next step's going to be to add some images, maybe some doodles. Like I said, I, I have no idea where this is gonna go, but I no longer have a blank piece of paper, and that's the important thing. I have a starting point, and right now if I wanted to, if I still wasn't sure what direction I wanted to go with my images, I could switch to markers, color this in, and then go from there. At some point you have to just do it though. So whether you switch over to markers and add some color and then start doing your images or however you wanna work, but what you don't wanna do is spend too much time laboring over those decisions you want to get used to making decisions and just going because you're going to learn and develop a lot more by taking action than you are about thinking things through. And especially if you're a hobby artist like I am and you're doing your artwork because you enjoy it and it relaxes you, then there's really no reason to stress too much about what you're doing. You're going to get a lot further by just taking action. So the next step's going to be to start filling in the background with some images, some doodles, some drawings, and whatever this word piece brings up, that's what you go with. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be something completely unrelated to other people, but for you, it's going to mean something. So it doesn't have to make sense. Just do whatever comes to you. Don't stress out too much about it. So now we can start working on some images. I got my lettering all drawn out. I know for this drawing, I want to do sort of a, like a doodly type drawing. Nothing real crazy, just have fun with it. Most of the time, my intention with any drawing prop is to have something that feels fun it should always be relaxing, enjoyable, nothing too stressful. For me, the whole point of working on some artwork, being creative, doing some drawings, paintings, whatever it is, for me, the entire purpose is to relax, enjoy myself, it's more or less a way of, like a form of therapy for me, I guess. <clears throat> not for any particular reason, not, not because I'm overly stressed out or anything like that, but just because it's a way for me to unwind, relax, feel a state of calmness. So I like to keep things simple, low stress, and just having fun. And I think doing drawings that are more along the lines of just sort of some doodles, something fun. And I'm just, I'm going to go with the traditional piece you know, that hippie vibe. You could do something totally different. You could draw things that make you feel at peace. You could do, you know, maybe you really like animals. Maybe, maybe you have a pet that calms you and makes you feel at peace. It really doesn't matter what it is. Maybe it's I don't know, something that would be the opposite of peace. It doesn't matter how you do these. Whatever it brings up for you, that's what you should go with. I wouldn't try to force anything. But if you're having trouble coming up with ideas or feeling inspired, a good thing to do is to just get started. Go with a theme, go with a direction 
and then from there whatever happens happens and let it flow into what it naturally wants to turn into and don't don't stress out too much about things needing to be perfect or having any type of expectation for the outcome just go with wherever it takes you let it be whatever it wants to be and keep it as low stress as possible just have fun nothing nothing that's going to bring any pressure into it nothing that's going to make you feel like you didn't meet your expectations and especially if you're doing more of a doodle style just putting in some random images they can be abstract abstract is actually that's a really great way if you don't know what to draw and you're feeling maybe a little bit of pressure or it's starting to stress you out because you're not sure what you want to draw doing some abstract style art is a really good way to overcome that that feeling of being I don't know if you want to call it trapped or just putting pressure on yourself you could do if you've ever done zentangles or if you're familiar with the zentangle you could break your paper up into different sections and put patterns in there and those are also a really great way to add some filler to your page just to fill in some, if you got big open areas and you don't know what exactly it is you want to put in those areas, you could always divide it up with some kind of lines, make it, you know, broken down into sections and then do some patterns in there like the, the Zentangle style artwork and just filling it with some random or not random, they can be more deliberate, but just some patterns, nothing, nothing too specific or um, anything that's going to take a lot of your brain power or stress you out. The whole idea, especially with the Fun Friday drawings, is that they should be very low stress. They should just be something that you can enjoy, you relax, they're on Fridays because we're coming into the weekend. We want our weekends to be a way to recharge ourselves for the next week. So they should always be light, fun, low stress, no pressure, just something you can enjoy doing. And I think the best way to do that is to just simply don't have any sort of expectation for how it's going to turn out. Just go with it. Let it take you, take you where you want it to, where it wants to take you. And don't try to control it so much. I think a lot of times with our artwork, we have such high expectations for what we want to accomplish with it. At sometimes we take the enjoyment rate right out of it. So I'm um, just starting to fill in some of the areas. I got some flowers, nothing too detailed. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the other areas yet. I might put in some more of like a doodle type drawing. What I was thinking before is maybe do some kind of caricature style image of like some kind of hippie guy maybe in here I'm not sure I'm gonna think about that a little bit so we're just gonna keep working on this and just keep filling in the areas going back and forth breaking up the the big chunks of blank space and my goal is to fill the entire paper up you know kind of like I said sort of like a doodle type of vibe and fill the whole area up. I don't really want any white space other than, you know, in the images themselves. So the goal here is just keep working on it, keep filling the paper up. 
The next thing I want to do is add a hippie character in here. And I'm not exactly sure how I want it to look or how I want to draw it. I'm sort of thinking I might make it big and have the upper body up here and then the legs down here, maybe some bell bottoms or something. Just some kind of a fun hippie type character. And I know it's going to take up quite a big a space quite a bit of the space here and that's okay I'm not too worried about how everything looks as far as things being perfect I'm not going to stress out about that too much I know I want I want a headband so what I like to do is I like to start with the things that I know and the things that I'm comfortable with and then working on the more difficult details or the things that I'm unsure of as I go because it's a lot easier if you can get some just some general things down I know I want some glasses maybe some of those round John Lennon type looking glasses so it's easier if you work on the things you know you're going to include and then make the changes as you go and add to it as you go and figure it out. Because if you spend too much time trying to figure everything out, what typically tends to happen is that you just get stuck and you don't do anything at all. You sit in indecision and not knowing what you want to do. I don't know exactly how I want this character to look. But I'm just going to rough in some basic things. And then I can change it later on. I can add to it. I can make some adjustments. I don't know if I want him to have a mustache. I'm kind of thinking maybe a mustache. I know I probably want him to have long hair. So there are a few things I, I'm pretty sure or I'm comfortable in saying that I want certain things to be included in it, but there's also things I'm completely unsure of, and I don't want those things that I'm unsure of to hold me up and keep me from moving forward. So for that reason, I'm just gonna start doing a rough sketch, figure it out as I go, and not not get too stressed out about making all these decisions ahead of time because what I really want to do is I want to keep moving forward. I want to keep working on it. I don't want to get held up too much by any, any particular details. As far as his clothes go, I'm not 100% sure at this point what I want his clothes to be. Maybe like some kind of flannel shirt or I don't know, I might do a t-shirt or a tank top. There's a lot of choices. I don't know that I care too much about the shirt. I don't, I don't feel like the shirt's really that big of a deal. Um, as far as what type of shirt he should be wearing, the colors, the style, I don't know that that really matters to me that much. I do know I want him to have some bell-bottom pants on, and I'm thinking maybe, maybe I want him to be barefoot. 
So just draw some indication of some toes. I might put maybe some flowers or something on his pants. I don't really know. I'm not 100% certain about that yet. But I do know I want him to have long hair. I know I want him to have glasses. I know I want him to have a big headband on. So those things can be added in right away. I don't care too much about the arms or the shirt, as I mentioned earlier. So I don't really care if those are included. I can just tuck those behind some of the other images and not, not really worry about them too much. His foot is going to need fixed, but I do think I'm going to have him just being barefoot. I like that idea. So I'm just going to put some toes in there, just some circles for the toes. Let his bell bottoms come down. I'll add some details in here before I do the outlining and the color. I want to put some folds in his in his pants so they look a little bit better a little more interesting some extra details and I'll probably go in there and add some more details make them look a little bit better not a hundred percent sure on the mustache or if I want to add a beard I might add some kind of a design on the headband But that's the rough idea of where I want it to be. And I might leave it like that because I do want this to be more of a loose drawing. Because this should be enjoyable and relaxing. So I don't want to stress out too much over all the little details. Yeah, so the other thing I might want to put, I might do like a the front end of a Volkswagen bug or something, or maybe a Volkswagen van. I think I might add something like that in here, or maybe I could do it over here. But the important thing is I want to keep moving. I want to keep adding things. I don't want to get too hung up on thinking things through and trying to make the decisions ahead of time and trying to make sure everything's perfect. I want it to be a very relaxed, fun drawing. And the best way I know to do that is to just keep moving and to not stress out about all the details. So I got my peace sign in here. I got the little hippie guy in here. I got some flowers. I'm just going to keep working on it. So the next thing I want to add is a little Volkswagen van and I think I'm gonna add it in this corner I don't know that it'll look right so I'm gonna start by sketching it out really lightly so that if I don't like how it looks I don't want it to look misplaced here so I'm gonna just draw it in real lightly that way, if I need to, I can just erase it and not include it. It's something that I've always liked. Several years ago, somebody made me an artist trading card with the, with the Volkswagen van on the front, you know, looking at it from the front, front view of it. I always thought it was a really cute card. And it was something that I've been wanting to try and just haven't really gotten around to it. So I figure this would be a good opportunity to put it in there. And I'm not going to do anything real detailed. I want to keep this it's kind of loose and fun and nothing too crazy. I don't want to get overly detailed. I want it to be a little more of a cartoon feel. 
So I'm going to sketch it in. So far, I think it'll look okay. I thought it might look a little, little odd, a little misplaced here, but I think it'll be okay. So once I get the basic drawing in and the placement, then I can go back in and darken up the lines a little bit. And I'm not going to put too much detail in it. Oftentimes when we draw things, we're really just drawing a symbol of whatever that is. Unless you're doing some kind of illustration work. We really just want a symbol. And what I mean by that is... If you draw a car or a house or whatever it is, a person, whatever it is you're drawing, the goal is just for people to look at it and, and be able to recognize what it is. That's all. Art's just a, a bunch of symbols that read as whatever it is that they are. So... I don't, it doesn't have to be perfect. I don't have to add in all the details. My goal is that I look at this and it's obvious that it's a Volkswagen van. And that's it. I mean, that's, that's really the only goal. Is that it reads as a Volkswagen van. Which if you think about it. When you're drawing things, whatever it is you're trying to, to draw, it's not that hard for, for it to come across as whatever it is that you're drawing. And I think as artists, especially as hobby artists, we beat ourselves up about not being good enough and we're not as good as this person or that person or whatever these stories are that we tend to tell ourselves when we're being bullies to ourselves over our artwork when in reality most of the stuff we draw if it looks like what it's supposed to look like and you can tell then I think that's a success so don't get too hung up on on all the little details and um, everything needing to be perfect because the reality is nothing needs to be perfect. And especially if you're working on your artwork because you find it enjoyable and relaxing and you're doing it just for yourself, then you don't really need that expectation of perfection because that's not the goal. The goal for me when I'm doing any of my drawings is because I enjoy it and I find it therapeutic and relaxing. So that's the goal, right? The goal is to be relaxed and to enjoy the creative time. So that's it for the, <clears throat> the little Volkswagen van. I think that'll work. The placement doesn't bother me too much. I thought it might look a little bit like it was just kind of floating there. But I think it's okay. We'll leave that there and continue working. Maybe throw some hearts in here somewhere. And then I need to decide how I want to fill in the white space. If I want to fill in the white space. If I don't. So far I'm, I'm liking how it's turning out. So... We're just going to keep working on it. I think maybe I'll put a heart in here somewhere. Maybe a couple hearts. I don't know. Figure it out as we go. So I finished up the sketch off camera. Just so I can could try to be more in the zone a little bit. Be more present with what I was drawing. I decided to fill in the extra spaces with some patterns. I added a couple hearts. I didn't do all the patterns here because they're kind of tedious and they're just as easy to do them with a pen as they are to do them with the pencil first. So the next thing 
I want to do is outline everything. And I have a couple different markers. I have a regular medium size outlining pen and then I have this brush pen that I've actually never used before. I couldn't even tell you where it came from, as a matter of fact, but I'm going to go ahead and use this. Using a brush pen is something that's been on my list of things that I want to get back into doing. Years ago, I used to use almost exclusively the brush pens, and I really like them, but they do take a little bit of some getting used to to get the control down. So I'm going to use a combination of these two. Um, I might go back in with even a darker marker or a darker pen. Um, not darker, I'm sorry, a wider pen. Go back in with a wider pen for some of the outlines. One of the things I like to do in my artwork is to have some varying line weights. And that's not necessarily something that everybody wants to do, but it's a look that I like in my own artwork. It's a personal preference, so I'll be working on getting some different line weights in there. And yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and outline everything. I'm going to do that in a time lapse because it's a very, not a tedious process, but it would probably be tedious to watch. I find it very relaxing as I'm doing it, but there's not much to talk about while doing the outlining. I'm literally just going to go over my pencil lines with either my brush pen or my regular outlining pen. So I think that'll be better done as a time lapse so you're not just watching me trace over top of pencil lines. So I will be back with you after the outlining's done.
I got most of the outlining done. I need to go in with my eraser and clean up all the extra pencil lines, get rid of those. And I need to finish in these little bubbles in this area in here. They're going to be the same as what these ones are. But they make my hand really sore and they're very tedious. So I don't want to keep doing this other section. I'm going to take a little bit of a break from that. So I think what I'm going to do is erase everything, clean it up, and then start working on adding some color and filling in some of the black areas. And then I will work on this a little bit at a time probably as I go and, and break it up and not try to do all of it all at once. Um, so I think I will go ahead and go off camera to do the erasing. That's not anything you guys want to watch. And then I will come back when the erasing's done. I always use either this black eraser that I really like. I've been using this one more. I used to always use the pink pearl eraser. But the problem with these is that you have to clean them because you'll get these smudge marks on there. And if you don't keep the marker clean, then it will transfer onto your paper and you'll actually add marks to your paper if you're using a, a spot that gets built up with the graphite. The only thing I don't like about the black eraser is that it's super messy, but it's kind of, it's like self-cleaning because as you use it, it all the material of the eraser comes off but it leaves, I don't know if you can see this or not, but it leaves a pretty big mess behind. I don't know that I love that about it, but I do like that I don't have to worry about it leaving any graphite residue on my paper. It works really well for cleaning everything up. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to finish this up off camera, and then I will be back with you shortly. I got the drawing all cleaned up, got the pencil lines erased. Now I'm going to work on adding some color. I usually keep, I'm going to do markers, so I usually keep a scrap piece of paper where I can test out the colors, see how they blend. I like to use two or three different colors and blend them together. When you're doing your drawings, you can do either solid colors or you can do blended colors. It's your choice, personal preference of what you like. I think you should always do whatever feels right for you and not worry about following what other people say or what other people do. Use that type of stuff for inspiration or to get ideas to try new things, but don't feel like you have to be inside a, a box of what everybody else is doing or what other people think you should do. Experiment, have fun, especially if you do like I am and you're doing your artwork for relaxation and enjoyment and just for your own purposes. If that's the case, if you're a hobby artist and you just like drawing and like creating art, then do whatever you want, do whatever you find to be enjoyable and relaxing and don't stress out so much about the outcome because if you're doing it to relax, in reality, the outcome doesn't matter because it's the process that's relaxing. The final piece of art, we can take enjoyment out of and be proud of ourselves and those sorts of things, but... I mean, if you think about it, if you're creating art for relaxation, it's the process itself that you find relaxing. Whether it's getting into that creative state or whatever it might be for you, it's not the final piece of art isn't what gives you the relaxation. It's the process that does. So 
protect yourself and do whatever you need to do to make sure you are enjoying that process as much as you possibly can. Which is why I often, when I'm making these videos, I intend to do more time lapse. And what happens is when I stop the camera and I'm going to just do a couple little things real quick and it's more relaxing when I'm not worried about the camera being on, even if it's a time lapse and I'm not explaining something or I'm not talking while I'm drawing, I still have to pay attention to the camera and make sure everything's staying in focus and you can see what I'm doing. I'm not getting off camera too much. Um, if you've noticed, and I'm sure you do the same thing, I move my paper a lot. And sometimes when you do that, when you're recording, you end up getting out of, out of the area that the camera's picking up and you have to keep paying attention to make sure that's not happening. So um, sometimes I'll just think I'm going to do something real quick and then the next thing you know, I got three quarters of it done and didn't record everything I meant to record but I do it for my own enjoyment so and I make these videos as a way to try to reach other people encourage others to look at things maybe in a different way I feel like there's a lot of focus on being as good as you can possibly be and constantly improving and let's sell our art on Etsy and make money and all these other things and get on Instagram and have a following and be famous and have all these people getting on and telling us how great our artwork is and how good we are. And for me, that's just not something that's important. I was going to say that's ever been important, but when I was in my 20s, I definitely was more worried about what other people thought, and I would post something on the internet and want people to compliment me and whatnot, but that was definitely not as fulfilling as what I feel now with just working on my own art, having fun, enjoying it just going through the process of what I'm doing and focusing on that instead of worrying so much about what the outcome's going to be. So I'm going to keep working on this. I will probably blend most of my colors because that's the look that I like. If you want a flatter look with solid colors, you can do that. It, it's a, totally up to you. It's just a matter of what you like, what type of look you're going for. Um, I need to fill in this area with some more of these circles. I'll probably do quite a bit of this off camera because if I record it, I'm just going to end up doing a time lapse anyway. And like I said, I find it more relaxing if I'm not worrying about recording and what the camera's picking up and focusing on. So I'll probably go ahead and work on this off camera and then maybe pick back up towards the end. Maybe talk a little bit about where my thoughts were and anything worth mentioning. So I will be back in a little bit. This is what I have so far. I'm going to keep working on this off camera. I need to fill in the color of the flowers over here, which I'm going to do the same as this. I need to do his shirt and headband. I'll probably do those the same two colors. And then I need to decide how I want to do the background. I'll probably leave these little bubble areas black and white, but I don't want this much white space in here. So I'm just going to use the same process I've been using and do the easier stuff first, the things that I know, and then go from there. I'm thinking I'll probably do these negative space areas maybe a little bit darker to help push them back a little bit. 
but I'll figure it out as I go. And then I will be back with you when I have more of it done. Okay, here's my finished drawing. I added some color to all the background areas. I decided I didn't want to leave all that white space in there. And I also took a black colored pencil and shaded in around the edges of both of these to kind of push that back a little bit. Overall, I like how it turned out. It was a lot of fun to do. It was very relaxing. If I was going to do it again, though, I think I would not add in these patterns and just make that all solid colors, maybe a little couple areas of pattern. But I don't like all the pattern in here, so I maybe would do that differently. But this is why I like doing this type of drawing, whether it's a graffiti art or something that looks a little less like a graffiti style. Something like this doesn't look too much along that style, but it's still combining lettering with graphic images. And you learn a lot about colors and how to get everything to work together. So I really like doing this type of drawing. They're a lot of fun for me. And I hope you feel encouraged to try doing one of your own. That's it for today, and I will see you in the next video. Happy creating!